Thank you very much for the introduction. So today I'm going to present some uh, work that we did in the, uh, in some time ago uh, about an analysis based on dissipation element. And this analysis, uh, analysis has been performed on a number of different flows, especially uh, premix and on-premix uh, jet planes. So this is a working collaboration between uh, our institute in uh, Aachen and some other people in KAUST in Saudi Arabia where, where I was also working before and uh, University of Texas of Austin in uh, USA. So what are dissipation elements? So if you think about a scalar field that can be a passive scalar in turbulence or kin kinetic energy, whatever, you can define this dissipation element in the, s in the following way. So imagine that you have a point, you compute the gradient of the scalar that you uh, want to analyze and then you follow the gradient in the two direction until you reach the maximum of the, on the minimum along the, um, the gradient trajectory. And then you uh, collect all the points in a certain region that are all connected to the same extremal points. And then you call this region that now it's uh, uh, drawn in 2D here in this example, you call this region a dissipation element. So you have di one dissipation element here, another here, and so on. So as you can see, these uh, dissipation elements are space filling, so they include uh, when you collect all of them, they include the entire field, and uh, they can be used to uh, build statistics and to analyze the, analyze the structure of the underlying uh, scalar field. There are some properties about these uh, uh, elements. For example, they are equivalent to Morse male complexes in topology, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna apply this analysis to the temperature field in a premix plane and uh, to the mixed diffraction field in, uh, in, the, in, a, in a series of uh, uh, non-premix planes. So this is a, a sketch of one, of, the, of one dissipation element around a non-premix flame. You can think as a, this uh, surface as, a, as the flame surface, and this is a dissipation element that goes to, from a minimal, uh, local minimum to a local maximum of the temperature field. You can parameterize this object with two values. One is the difference between the two values of the scalar to the two extremal points, so Tmax and Tmin, and another parameter is the linear length between this, uh, these two points. Of course, you can build a different parameter, such as the gradient as delta t divided by L. So we are interested in analyzing this, uh, the statistics of these uh, two uh, observable and to relate them somehow to the structure of the flame in order to understand what's the um, structure of the, of the field from, a point, from the point of view of this, uh, of this uh, dissipation element. So these dissipation elements have been uh, uh, developed and introduced by Wong and uh, Peters, and uh, they have been used a lot to analyze uh, uh, incompressible or, let's say, no reactive flows. And the reason for that is because they have uh, many properties that are very desirable in terms of uh, analysis of turbulent flow. First of all, they are quite universal with respect to the Reynolds number. So what I'm showing here are the probability density function of the linear uh, length uh, between the two extremal points for homogeneous isotropic turbulence at four different Reynolds number. And you can see if you uh, rescale them with the appropriate uh, mean length scale, uh, the PDF, both in linear scale and uh, in uh, log scale, collapse extremely well. So the idea is then to try to write some transport equation or some model for the PDF of these, like has been done uh, by uh, the same people I mentioned before, and then try to use them as a model for, for uh, reactive flows. But first of all, we need to try to analyze the uh, flames with this kind of method, and there are a number of questions that arise. First of all, does the, invari the invariance that we see here is also true in reactive flow? If I plot this in a, in a flame, shall I see the same thing? Or uh, again, are these the same in reactive flows? Or can we try to find uh, a correlation between you know, entries of this PDF and the local structure of the flame? And also, um, can we use them as a way to measure the activity of turbulence with respect to the activity of the flame? Because this is the main uh, uh, driver of the turbulent uh, chemistry interaction. So our philosophy usually is to try to have as many scales as possible to test our uh, understanding. And uh, these are examples of flames that we, gonna perf that we have been performing. These are two different premix flames at different Reynolds number. 
This is another example of a premix flame in a spherical expanding configuration, and this is a typical uh, non premix jet flame. So today I'm going to talk about these two cases and uh, uh, a couple of cases in this uh, configuration if I have time. And the point of this is trying to check about the universality of what we are looking and also the relevance with respect to application, let's say. For example, if you learn something here at two different Reynolds numbers that are, of course, order of magnitude smaller than what you will see in real application, can we extrapolate to, the, you know, to an engine or to uh, any other uh, real application? So this is a description of the configuration we're going to look at as a premix flame. This is a very standard uh, jet flame in which you inject uh, flow from here, uh, premix fuel and oxidizer, and you, you let it burn uh, in, the, in the combustion chamber, let's say. These are uh, a series of simulations at four different Reynolds number, keeping uh, a number of chemical parameters constant. And uh, you can see that uh, uh, there is a fairly wide variation of Reynolds number. This is about an order of magnitude. Then you can see that the largest of this simulation, it's quite big. It's about 22 billion point, and uh, I mean, uh, that's one of the biggest simulation ever performed for a, a reactive system. So usually premix flame are characterized in terms of uh, this diagram. It's called the borgi peters diagram, in which you compare the length scale typical of turbulence, that's an integral scale with the typical length of the, of the flame. This is a, a flame thickness for a laminar flame corresponding to the exactly same uh, composition, chemical composition of the, of the DNS and the U prime of the turbulence with respect to the typical laminar velocity of the, of the flame. And when you, you put your points here and you, you recognize that there are different regimes in which the flame can burns, for our simulation we are here, uh, we end up in the so-called thin reaction zone. This is a regime for premix flame in which the reaction zone thickness is not really affected by turbulence, so the structure of the flame is very close to a laminar one in the region where there is heat release, but on the other, uh, on the other side where the, the heat release is negligible and the flow is dominated by diffusion, there is a strong effect of turbulent transport. And that's a quite complicated uh, regime uh, to model, and it's also the one that is usually in uh, real application. So if we apply the dissipation element to our flame, this is a chunk of the flame I've shown before. So what you end up doing is dividing your scalar field that now is temperature, this field here, in small chunk. And, uh, and this small chunk are region in which the gradient is connected to the same uh, uh, extremal points. Now, if you do the same statistic I've, sh I've shown before for the linear length, PDF of the linear length, I have here this dot, the dashed line is the, is the is the statistics I've shown before for homogeneous isotopic turbulence. And if you see, if you do the same for the two premix flame at two different Reynolds number, you see that there is a kind of uh, good agreement with respect to the incompressible of turbulence. One thing you should notice here is this small kink. I will talk about that a little bit later. And also, as you expect, when you plot this in, uh, in a log scale, you can see that the higher Reynolds number is uh, characterized by a larger, uh, a wider PDF, as you should expect for higher Reynolds number. Uh, case with a wider range of uh, scale. We went on and we started to uh, look at the same statistics condition on different regions of the, of the frame structure. So we, uh, uh, we analyzed dissipation elements, so region that connects to a streamer, but we condition our statistic in considering only, for example, dissipation element that only cross a certain uh, uh, set of surface and not Others. For example, here this high temperature surface in this schematics is the, where the flame lo is located, so where the heat release is happening, while here the heat release is negligible. So this dissipation element here has uh, no connection with the, with the flame dynamics, while this has, for example. Now if we look at the same, uh, uh, let me skip that. Now if we look at the same statistic, other, at other statistics, for example, the statistics of the uh, uh, difference between the temperature in, in the two extremal points, but condition in the statistics on different isosurface of the temperature field. So being on the flame or not, for example, for these high temperature values, the dissipation element is, uh, crosses the flame, while for this one is not. Again, here the black dots are the result for the homogeneous isotropic turbulence, and the lines are for the premix flame you can see that if we condition on the low temperature values, so no flames, there is a region 
where the structure of the dissipation element is very close to what you see in isotropic, in isotropic turbulence, while if you include the, same, the flame surface in the, in the dissipation element statistics, you can see that the statistics is very different. And actually the delta t that you see, so the jump between this point and this point, is very close to the total jump that you can uh, get. These are consistent, consistent somehow to the picture that we have in the flame in the regime I've, I've been describing. And that kind of information, like the a PDF uh, that has this structure, could be used as an information to develop model for this, uh, for this part of the, uh, of the flame. So another thing that we did, we conditioned, we, we computed the temperature as a function of the, of the, um, of the distance measured along the uh, curvilinear axis of this, uh, of this dissipation element. Now what you have here, the orange uh, vertical line marks the flame, the, the, the black dotted line, uh, dashed line is uh, what you see in a 1D uh, laminar flame. And this is what you see when you do this conditional statistics with respect to this distance in the turbulent field. And you see that there is a thickening of the flame structure. Uh, that, I mean, this analysis reveal a, a thickening of the flame structure in the broad in the braid zone, so ahead of the flame, also in the post flame region. These two regions are very important because the diffusion transport, the, sorry, the turbulent transport here is strongly connected to the propagation of the flame and uh, the, the structure here is strongly connected to the production of pollutant such as NOx or CO uh, from, a, from a flame. So we also applied uh, the same methodology to non-premix flame. Again, this is uh, uh, an example of what come out of this uh, decomposition with dissipation element. Also here we started two different uh, Reynolds number and we applied in this case the um, the, the dissipation element analysis to the uh, mixed fraction flow uh, field. And uh, we studied again if this, the probability of the, uh, sorry, the statistics of the characteristic of the dissipation element, such the length and the gradient based on the dissipation element, comply to the, what I'm calling here the cold jet, that will be just an incompressible jet or something, or you will get pretty much as a remote result also for homogeneous isotropic turbulence. And you can see that there is the, the statistics at both the Reynolds number for the, for the flame are very close to the one that you see for uh, uh, no reactive incompressible jet. So uh, all these statistics I've shown tends to point out the fact that uh, uh, th this dissipation element can be used to investigate the interaction between turbulence and uh, chemistry combustion. And also, since there is a quite strong um, invariance of the dissipation element statistics with respect to Reynolds number and combustion regime, that means that we can use this kind of uh, analysis, and especially the analysis that come from homogeneous isotropic turbulence for what concerns this analysis to build model for combustion and for uh, diffusive transport in combustion and so on. So at the end, let me acknowledge our funding source. It's an ERC grant in uh, Haken. And uh, also, I mean, all these data are usually made available from us. So if anybody is interested, it's, I'm happy to share. Thank you very much. During the simulation, it's not possible. It's uh, much more expensive than the, your single time step, or even if you do it every, I don't know, 100 time step or something like this. It's also the parallelization is quite complicated compared to the standard uh, you know, MPI structure that you have in this big simulation, so you cannot do it online. Uh, there is actually one thing we noticed that these dissipation elements are very close, or let's say equal, to uh, the composition that is usually used in topology, the, uh, more smile, uh, this one, more smile uh, uh, complexes, and this is extremely fast to compute. So we are trying to explore if this new point of view can be used to make uh, computation of this dissipation element on the fly during the simulation. And so, so for example, like with the simulation, how much capacity do you have in the Well, I mean, imagine that, so mm -hmm. let's say this simulation, that's a big one, 
runs on under a thousand core. Yeah. And if you, and one step takes, I don't know, 30 seconds to do the execution element, you need five hours. Right. But so. Yes. Well, yeah, something like this. Okay. For one single, actually for one chunk of the single field. Okay. So on a, a, yeah, on so. Uh, no, on way less. But you, I mean, parallelizing at the same level that you can afford here, it's very complex in this dissipation element analysis because they are not local at all, right? They connect parts of the field that are very far from each other. So the parallelization is much more complicated than your usual, you know, structure of MPI in which you communicate just the ghost cell of one processor on the other. Well, the analysis code is not mine. I didn't write it, so it's someone else in our institute. I don't know what's the plan about this to, to do this. Of course, I mean, if there is some sort of collaboration, and I mean, I don't think there is any problem in that. And the first question was how to, uh, you said? Um, if there is a plan to uh, speed up the computation. Uh, of this dispersion, yeah, I mean, we are trying to have it as fast as possible, also exploring this, uh, I mean, other uh, way of doing it, but yeah there is actually a plan. Yeah. Well, that's, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you very much.